Hello everyone, welcome to the course Programming Best Practices. In this video tutorial, we'll discuss about few tips and styles that is good for you know standard uh, practices. So going through the tips and styles, the first point is use space instead of tab because tabs appear differently in different ID. You must have noticed this you if you have written your program into different id for a, an example like if you have written a php code or a java code in eclipse ide then if you open that particular file dot java file or dot php file in notepad or notepad plus plus or any other different ide you'll see the indentation is mismatched because each ide use its own indentation style and if you open that particular file into for that particular ide then only it appears correctly but it's not always that you uh, whatever the code you are writing that will be opened by somebody else to that particular ide so instead of you know tab because tabs appears differently for different different ide use space space has a consistency among across all IDs, in fact, even Notepad also. And a good tip is that you use three to four spaces for each indentation. There is no rule, but it's a good tip that you can follow. You know, you, you can use six space also, seven space also, that doesn't matter, but be consistent. That's the uh, first point that I have men mentioned earlier. Now establish a maximum line length to avoid having, a, having to scroll the window of the text editor you know when you are writing your code you know we tend to if, if it's a very big line of code you know uh, we tend to put that line of code uh, scroll to the right side of the of your text editor or the IDE but you know uh, it is better that if you establish a maximum line length so after a particular that maximum is reached you break that particular line and bring the next portion of the code to the next line the code you know that be, makes it much more readable and another tips is that you use space after each comma in lists such as array values and arguments also before and after the equal sign of an assignment so if you look into here you know there is a space over here after equal to sign or also an after an equal to sign and also you know this minus operator you know there is a space over here and after the minus operator similarly you know um, like if you are multiplying doing something you, you have a space after and before and the multiplication and also if you are putting a, a list like x comma y then you have a space after comma so this helps increase the readability of your code moving to the next slide um, Another tip is that you know you should avoid placing more than one statement per line. This is very much essential because that reduce the readability of your code. So do not put multiple statement into one single line. Instead of that, follow one statement per line rule. Okay, now you choose and stick to a style for naming various elements of the code. This is one of the most influential aids to understand the logical flow. Okay, so basically, you know, you are actually sticking to a particular style of the code. So this is one style of the code, one way of writing the code. You know, it is properly indented, but I'll tell you the like why it where it is uh, different than this particular style. So if you see that the the bracket the brace the open brace you know this one start after the function name is you know is uh, being declared right so if, here also the this particular bracket starts after the if statement you know so this particular one has a end end of this one correct this and this is ending so and this and this is the ending and this and this in the ending so, and you, you see, this is properly aligned. There is no problem with the alignment, but this is one way of writing the code. This is one of the, one of the style that many developers follow. And another way of is, you know, is a simple procedural languages we have seen like C programming language. This is being used. But if you, if you even writing a C program and use this particular style, there is no harm in it. 
So here, you know, everything in the back, the bases uh, are started on the next line of the function name declaration or, you know, the if else statement or if you are using for loop, something like that. So whenever the braces starts, it starts in the new line and aligned properly. That means indented properly. Okay. So it's up to you, but there are, you know, just to let you know that there are, um, these two styles have been adopted by majority of the developers. If you are stick to any, any of your style, there is no problem in it, but be consistent. That's the matter of fact I want to, I want to tell to you. Moving to the next slide, you know, so it's a very good suggestion that put your comment in, into your code. Okay. So comment helps others to understand what you are trying to do. So, but you know, avoid obvious and un unnecessary comments. That is important too. So let's take an example of this one. Here we have a function, which is a validate email, you know, and then we are taking a pointer, character pointer to that email ID and we will be validating something and we will be, you know, uh, returning an integer value. Basically, this is a C programming example. So we have written the function name. What is the function name? What is the purpose of this function? Then the parameters, you know, P email ID, what it is doing. And then the return value 0 when the it, when it is a valid email address and 1 when it is an invalid email address, right? So now anybody, you know, uh, knows that he is getting a 0 as a return value. So that means that this particular email uh, validate, validate function is actually, you know, uh, the e email validation is successful. If it is returning one, that means it is invalid email address. So by men mentioning all these details as a comment helps anybody who is using this function that you have created in his part of the code. So he will be much more uh, knowledgeable, much more, uh, much more readable about your what what you have written inside the program. Correct. And if you take about this particular comment that there is a you know validate email. And then I am putting a comment like, you know, calling the function validate email to check if the entered email ID is valid or not. This is kind of unnecessary because, you know, by, by the name, I can see, you know, this is a very good naming convention that validate underscore email. So what it is going to do, right? You don't have to write over here what it is actually trying to do because it is obvious mm, that, you know, it is going to validate the email address. So that's the point that I wanted to make over here that I've heard obvious and unnecessary comments moving to the next slide you know it's a good suggestion that append computation qualifiers like average if it's average then avg summation then sum minimum then min maximum then mix max and index kind of thing to the end of the variable name where appropriate okay and use customary opposite pairs in variable names such as mean max you know if you have uh, let's say if you are writing a program which uses both minimum and maximum things so use kind of this opposite pair values uh, a variable name with min a variable another variable name with max okay so that helps to understand okay this is the my minimum value and that's my maximum similarly you know begin end and open close anything you like but always be consistent with this pair name Okay, now when you are declaring a Boolean variable, you know, a name, it should contain is, you know, this is a, this is important, the is, you know, which implies yes or no, uh, or true or false, basically, right? So for an example, you know, the files found, file is, sorry, I'm sorry, file is found. So here is the is part. So we know that if this returns true, that means the file that we are trying to search that has been found. If it is written false, then that means that, you know, the file that we are looking to search that we could not find find it. The program could not find it. Similarly, is valid email. This is another good example. Is prime number. Let's say you are doing a prime number programming and you are marking it with a, if that given number is prime or not by, you know, true or false or yes or no, something like that. So if you uh, name your variable like this, it helps to understand that, okay, you are actually storing the Boolean value into it. And this is prime number. When is prime number contains true, that means, okay, this prime number is a true. It's a prime number. And if it is false, that means it's not a prime number. So that is how it, it we are able to understand uh, well. 
when we look into the code, uh, if you use this particular naming con convention. Okay, and in this particular uh, topic, you know, uh, in this particular point, what it's trying to say that, you know, use uh, the variable names properly. Don't be lazy to just to put your variable name like X, Y, Z or A, B, C, D, something like that. Put proper meaning name. And but you are actually, if you if you want to use really single letter variable name such as I, J, you know, use that in a short loop indexes like for is it for you know something like that. For i is equal to zero, you know, i is less than ten, i plus plus. So this is basically you know used for loop indexing, or maybe array indexing, something like a i. Okay, use that i j something like that on the indexing purpose purpose only, that like the loop indexes or array indexes, but do not use it as a proper variable name where let's say you are calculating a, a temperature centigrade to Fahrenheit and you are using i and j. That uh, that doesn't make sense. Moving to the next slide, you know, it's a good tips. Uh, basically, uh, the variable names, somebody, you know, prefixing the variable name is a good tips. That if you are declaring a global variable, you can, you know, prefix your variable name with G underscore. Okay. So, and if, if it's a local variable, then L underscore. If it is a, you know, input parameter, and this has been used in Oracle, basically in and out um, uh, PLSQL. Oh, in Oracle PLSQL. If it is a in parameter, then basically you know p underscore, and if it's out parameter, then o underscore. So these are the good practice that you can use. Um, you can you can think of uh, you know different different ways to make your code readable. So there is no hard rule of it, but yes, there you should try to make your code readable. That should be the motto. Okay, and when you are declaring the constants, the constants should be, you know, first of all, all uppercase and with underscores between words and it should be meaningful. For example, you know, the number NUM days in week, number of days in week, okay. Or if you are, you know, uh, defining a constant with a common type, uh, so, you know, prefix with a common name. For example, you know, font Arial or font Roman. So, here the font and this font is common, right. So, put a common name so that you know it, it, it is much more easier to understand for some for either for you by you or by somebody else. Moving into the next slide, here is a good tips that group your code which is meant for certain tasks. I'll show you an example. So, if you you know group your code like this, so all these lines of code you know are basically a, a particular group. It is a group of statements which is doing which is doing what? It's initializing the variables. So PRIN is one variable, RAT is one another variable, and number of years is another variable. So all variables are initialized here. So this is one group of code. And then I put one, you know, a new line or a blank line. After that, you know, I put another group of code over here, which is basically calculating the interest. So I am calling this function. So if you see that this particular group has a different intention and this particular group has a different intention. So that is how you know that you should logically uh, group your code and make it separate so that it is much more easier to understand. And also you know put a comment. For example here I am initializing the variables and here I am calculating the interest. So those uh, these are the two uh, uh, things that is being um, commented so that when you are looking into this particular group of code, you know what it is doing. And also, if you look at this particular group of code, you know what it is doing. So commenting, put a meaningful comment, can increase the readability a lot. Okay, thank you for watching this video. Uh, we'll, for in, in our next video tutorial, we'll discuss about the programming practices. Thank you.